Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Smurf44. So today, guys, we do my top 10 best summer transfers of this year. Now, remember, guys, um, this is just my opinion. So please be aware that what I'm saying in these videos is just my personal preference. So please don't get mad at me or why you didn't put this player, this player in here. And, you know, like I said, guys, now we're going to have a live stream form of this um, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where you guys can come in. We can share your thoughts. Um, we're going to have a good discussion about this and remember guys it's open for anyone so basically anyone can join just join the youtube link now remember guys i will not be accepting any trolls or anything like that so i have to, i know I, I need to know you before coming in because a lot of times people don't really want to come and give their opinions they just want to come in and just troll so you know i've had enough of that so please remember that is that so without further ado let's go ahead and get started with the top 10 of course there are some honorable mentions which i'm not going to go through in this video uh, for the sake of time but um i'll probably discuss my honorable mentions tomorrow in the stream all right, so coming at number 10, guys, it is Declan Rice, number 10. Um, for me, guys, Declan Rice, for me, is a great player. Even though I feel like he is overpriced and I do think he is um, not worth $100 million, he is still a fantastic player. We saw what he did for England in the World Cup particular and how he guided West Ham to the first ever Conference League trophy. And, you know, it's a huge trophy for West Ham, you know. And we just saw recently against... Um, United, he scored that fantastic goal, you know, and I just feel like for Declan Rice in particular, it's a great sign. It's a great signing for Arsenal, and it shows that Arsenal have the ambition. They're actually trying to compete for the Premier League, you know, and you can see the Cronkies are finally investing, and I feel like he's a great CDM, he's a great central defensive midfielder, you know, and I feel like the guy has just been effortless, amazing on the ball, everything, his technical ability as well, which is something I really think Declan Rice is underrated, is that his technical ability is actually pretty good, and I actually feel like he's a, um, I feel like he is rated highly. It's just, like I said, I just feel like he's overpriced. So, for me, it makes the top 10. Number 9, I have is Christian Pulisic. My man, Christian Pulisic, man. I am so glad he got the move. I'm so glad he got the move out of Chelsea. He needed to get that. He needed to make that move. And I feel like, for me, with Christian Pulisic, it's great. It's great to see how he's been doing in Milan. He's had a great start there. He looks, he looks, he looks like he's enjoying himself, you know. And given how Milan have strengthened a lot this summer, you know, and the fact that they lost some key players like Brian Diaz, they lost, and obviously Sandra Tonali. It's good to see that Christian Pulisic is batted to the front line because one of my issues with Milan in previous seasons is that they are not very good goal scoring wise. They are not very clinical in the final third. And the and the, the the reason why they won the Scudetto a few seasons ago was because of how good Liao and Giroud was. And because Giroud has kind of dropped off a bit and Liao has not been as consistent, you know, that's how that's why Milan were kind of struggled to get top four last season. Obviously they did, but it wasn't as convincing as they were expected to, you know, and I just feel like for Christian Pulisic, you adding that him into the front line is amazing, you know, it's incredible, so shout out to Christian Pulisic, man, I'm happy for him, man, and he goes away from the shackles of Chelsea. Next up, number eight is Andre Onana. Andre Onana, for me, is in the top ten. Now, I know a lot of people have been critical of him so far this season for United, saying he's been kind of awful, you know, especially against Nottingham Forest, and some would even blame him against Arsenal. I feel like it's early signs. He's going to get better as the season goes on. And like I said, as as far as distribution is concerned, he's still an upgrade over David De Gea. You know, his saves his saves is also very good as well. You know, and so I feel like for me, he will come good in time. You know, it just you just, just people just gotta be patient with him. People just gotta relax with him because, like I said, guys, he is a great signing. And like I said, for fifty million, it's a bargain. And you know, he was instrumental for why Inter made the Champions League final last season. He was incredibly important. In my personal opinion, if he hadn't played. For Inter in that Champions League, Inter don't make that final. He was a, one of the key reasons why they made that final. So you have to pay respect to him. And he was, obviously, he deserves to be in the top 10, in my opinion. So he's number 8. Number 7, I have a center to know. I feel like this is a great sign from Newcastle. And I feel like it's so interesting that how they're going to be playing against Milan in the Champions League, you know. And I just think it's a great signing, you know. It shows that Newcastle have the depth. They have the quality to compete. And because they're competing both the Champions League and Premier League, he's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see how he does. You know, he's a great CD, and we all know how he's been doing for Milan. He's been one of the most incredibly important players, and now it's gonna be interesting to see how Milan does without him. And I feel like for Newcastle, it's a huge upgrade. Obviously, he's way better than Sean Long stuff, and you can have a midfield of Bruno Guimaraes and him. That's a great, great midfield to have on paper, and I feel like he could come good. I feel like he'll be a great signing, and I just wish him the best of luck, man. So, shout out to Sanders Tonali, man. Number six is Kim and Jay. I think Kim and Jay is a great signing. And considering how um, Byron just paid his release clause was incredible. Like, Byron just paid his release clause, which I think was like $50 million. 
you know, it's crazy how Bayern just signed him immediately, you know. And especially how good he was for Napoli and how instrumental he was for them to win the Scudetto is amazing. And the great thing about him is he's going to obviously start. And the thing is that, let's be real, Kim, um, Upamakano and uh, obviously Delit is error prone, you know. And the fact that one of them is going to get benched is incredible. And, you know, the fact that Kim, he can bring he can make Bayern better defensively. Now, do I still think Bayern have defensive issues? Yes, I still think they have issues. But I feel like it's now a little bit better defensively than it was last season because obviously Kim and Jay is just a short at the back. He doesn't make as many mistakes as those two as I mentioned. So shout out to Kim and Jay, man. Um, and let's see if he can make Bayern. Um, let's see how he does for Bayern in the Champions League because that's going to be incredible, man. Because obviously we know he's going to be guaranteed to win the league here and it's a matter of what he does in the Champions League. Number five is Alexis McAllister. I feel like for me, this is a great sign. This is a great signing for Liverpool. And I feel like he is a sign that Liverpool needed. You know, I feel like he's someone that can carry the ball forward, make those forward runs, make those carry the ball progression. And the issue with Liverpool for me in the last couple of seasons has been their midfield. And I feel like for me, this is a great sign. It's relatively cheap as well, not too expensive. And I feel like for me, McAllister is a great sign. He will come good in due course time. And I feel like he's a very good player. You know, I feel like we all saw what he did for Argentina in the World Cup. He was instrumental. He made that great, great assist to Di Maria. And I think it's a great signing, man. Great signing. I have nothing but applause to say Nothing but positive things to say about him. I, I don't really think there's any negative things about his game, to be honest. Number four, Victor Boniface. I feel like, for me, this is one of the most underrated signs this summer window. I feel like, for me, he is a great striker to have. Because my issue with Leverkusen last season was that they didn't really have good striker depth. Because, obviously, Patrick Schick was injured so much of the time. And, obviously, he's not as good as he used to be. And I just think it's great now that um, they finally brought in a striker, Victor Boniface. He's already been on fire for Leverkusen. He's already scored, I think, four goals in two games, that's, which is incredible. And they're going to be playing against league leaders next week. Um, they're going to be playing against um, Bayern Munich, which is obviously going to be an interesting battle. So, you know, I think for Victor Boniface, man, this is an amazing piece of business. We saw what he did in Union SG, how instrumental he was for them in the Europa League and how they almost won the league last season, of course. Um, and I just feel like for me, it's a great signing, man. I feel like it's an amazing signing. One of the most underrated signings. And yeah, I like Victor Boniface, man. Great signing. Third is Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi obviously is incredible. You have to put Lionel Messi in the top 10. And I feel like for me, for Messi, man, it's incredible. For Inter-Miami. Because you look how he's changed Inter-Miami single-handedly. Inter-Miami are, were last. There were 12 games winless. And the fact that Messi just came in and just single-handedly brought them to the league's cup final won them and possibly might even be able to win the u.s open cup you know it's incredible man messi is just unbelievable now we'll we do have to give credit to other players like busquets who's came in obviously done his job jordi alba as well but obviously you know messi's going to take most of the headlines you know he's been amazing for inter miami he's been revolutionary the fans are loving it and of course he's just a, it's just messi after all he's one of the greatest players of all time Probably one of the greatest players we'll ever see in our history. And, of course, Messi has to make the top 10. Number two is Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham, man. I can't believe I'm putting him number two as a rival fan. The guy has been incredible, guys. He's been unbelievable. As of the time of recording this video, he has scored in every single La Liga game. And he's not just scoring goals just for, like, you know, scoring when Real Madrid is winning, like, 5-0. He's been scoring match-winning goals. He scored the winner against Getafe. He scored the winner against Celta Vigo. He scored the winner against Almeria, I believe. He scored in every single game. The guy has been incredible with his goal scoring, you know? And this is unbelievable, man. Jude Bellingham, man, he's showing up, man. That $100 million price tag for him is looking very much looking very much um, deserved. And um, it looks like it's been well spent, you know? And I think for Real Madrid, man, he's going to be very incredible because obviously we know Real Madrid are struggling with their forwards this season. Obviously, Vinicius is going to be out for some time. And obviously, they don't have a proper striker. And Joe Lou is not really that guy, so... Who knows how many goals going to be at the end of the season? You know, he's going to, he might be on double digits goals and assists, man. We'll have to see, of course. And yeah, Drew Bellion for me, number two, of course. And then finally, number one, the guy himself, man, Harry Kane, guys. Harry Kane. Harry Kane, man. He has to be in this top 10, man. Harry Kane is unbelievable, man. The guy is unbelievable with his goal scoring ability. And I feel like for me, this signing alone is, is, makes Byron Champions League contenders. You know, and the reason why I put him at number one is because I feel like he's going to be very good at Bayern Munich. I feel like he's going to be amazing at Bayern. He's going to destroy the Golden Boot record, and I feel like he's going to be amazing. Now, my question for him though is that how he's going to do the Champions League? Because that's what I'm really interested to see is that can he live up to the Champions League hype? Because the thing with Kane is that a lot of people say he doesn't show up in big games. 
Is he going to show up in those big Champions League games against like Barcelona, against Real Madrid, against, you know, against um, Manchester City? You know, he's going to show up in those kind of crucial mammoth games that is game defining. Because like I said, guys, he he's coming to Bayern not just to win the league, win trophies. He's coming to make a statement. And if he wins the Champions League at Bayern Munich, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have uncomfortable conversations, man, because that will be very very impressive. So yeah, came for me number one. So let me know if I miss any big transfers. Of course, we'll have the live stream tomorrow to discuss your picks. I'm sure there are probably some players I didn't put in this list that you're gonna be arguing for. So uh, remember, guys, to let me know your picks in the comments below, guys, and also join the live stream tomorrow, guys. As I said, guys, remember, guys, to like and subscribe, guys. If you made it this far, please let me know in um, the comments below, guys. And um, yeah, like I said, guys, hope you guys did enjoy. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. Check out my other platforms in the description below. Also, become a member of the channel to get access to members' videos and member streams. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.